When you have myalgic encephalomyelitis, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome, you are always walking on a tightrope. You are just one fourth step away from crashing and entering into post-exertional malaise, during which time life can become a real nightmare. But what if there were a device that you could wear that could actually warn you in real time if you were about to enter a crash, no matter what that crash might be caused by? Recently, there's a startup company which is working on creating just such a device, a kind of continuous monitoring device, similar in a way to a continuous glucose monitor for type 2 diabetics, but one which can instead monitor the blood for the likelihood of whether or not someone is at risk of entering into a crash. In today's video, I'm going to tell you all about this device. But first, if you are new to this channel, my name is Patrick Usher and I'm an ME-CFS patient. And this is a place where I talk about the research into ME-CFS and long COVID in an accessible way. It's also a place where I talk about the various treatment strategies that I have tried in order to improve my condition. If that sounds of interest to you, please like and subscribe. Now, life is never a bed of roses when you have ME-CFS, but let's face it, the worst part of it is when you crash. During those times, all of the mechanisms within the illness become exacerbated, become heightened, and really, you become extremely ill. The issue is that pacing is not very easy. It can be very hard to gauge whether a certain activity might lead to a crash or not. Often, post-exertional malaise actually comes about in a delayed manner. It could be something you did yesterday, or two days ago, or three days ago, that leads to you having a crash today. What's worse is that it can really come from a variety of different sources. It could be from a mental stressor, or it could be from a physical stressor. And even within a physical stressor, it, it, could, it could come from a different kind of physical stressor. It could be that you walked too far on a certain day. It could be that you didn't walk particularly far, but you walked too quickly at a certain point. It could be that you took the stairs rather than the elevator. It could be that you had to do some physiotherapy uh, and that the strengthening of a muscle brought on a crash. Or it could be from some other kind of dynamic, perhaps one that you had no control over. But the point is, it can come from many different angles. And sometimes you can do something on day one and you're fine, you do the same on day two, but because you've done the same activity two days in a row, your body actually does crash. And so it can be very hard to actually manage your condition. Sometimes it seems that there aren't steadfast rules that you can actually cling to in order to avoid going into post-exertional malaise. One of the things that I have a tendency to do because I really just want to take part in life is if I think I can get away with something, I will try and get away with it. And sometimes I do get away with it. And sometimes I really don't. And I'm left wishing that I could have avoided the current suffering that I have just brought upon myself. So what if there were a device that you could actually wear that could actually take the guesswork out of pacing, that could tell you in real time if you are at risk of entering into a crash? So there is a startup company which is working on creating just such a device. That company is from the Netherlands and it is called Stressors for Health. Its CEO is Peter Dean, and Peter has had a long career as a professor of molecular and metabolic physiology at Radboud University in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. So here is Peter, a former professor of physiology at Radboud. He offers over 30 years of experience in preclinical translational research. Over a decade, he successfully secured over 5 million in research funding to study metabolic stress in diabetes, cancer, chronic kidney, and eye diseases. This is someone with a very comprehensive understanding of human physiology. And in more recent years, he's become interested in the problem of ME-CFS and long COVID. And what he has done is he, is he has identified a potential uh, protein marker within the blood. I don't know what that is, that's under wraps for the moment, but a potential protein marker which could actually indicate in real time whether or not someone is in danger of going into post-exertional malaise. And amazingly, this, um, th this marker can actually distinguish between where it is brain-related stress that has led to the post-exertional malaise, i.e. A, a mental 
or psychological stressor, or a uh, physical stressor from within the muscle. And what the vision ultimately is, is that actually people would wear a monitor, very similar to a, a continuous glucose monitor for type 2 diabetes, uh, where type 2 diabetics are actually warned if their glucose is going too high in real time. So that actually it would be like that, a continuous post-exertional malaise risk identifying monitor that could give you a little beep and warn you when you are at risk of going towards a crash. And so this would wonderfully take the guesswork out of pacing and could dramatically improve quality of life. Now this is not on the market yet. At the moment, Pater is looking for investors. And I know that there are already some similar products that do exist. For example, the Visible app, which monitors someone's heart rate in real time and tells them if they're in danger of going over the, their anaerobic threshold. And there's another device called Stat, which I don't think is on the market just yet, but should be soon, which monitors in real time blood flow to the brain. But I think that Pater's device really fills a gap because it's capable of measuring, uh, in principle, what might cause a crash from any angle. Uh, visible only measures if you're going over your anaerobic threshold, which is only one particular risk for what, for what might create a crash. Whereas Pater's device, in principle, can actually measure from any given angle what might risk someone entering into a crash. And so it's much more comprehensive in that way. Anyway, I just think this device would be a real relief in taking the guesswork out of pacing, you know, it could really dramatically improve someone's quality of life. If they listen to the device's warnings over the long term, they would make much better decisions and they would have a much greater chance of healing. Because it's really when you don't crash that you have the greatest chance of getting better. And that's when the body is actually able to repair. Professor Ron Davis from Stanford University in an interview some months back said that, um, for him, the number one likely contributing factor to why someone might actually recover is if they don't crash. And he talked in that interview about a graduate student of his who had severe ME-CFS and she decided that the key was not crashing. And so whatever else she did, she did not crash. One year later, she was fully recovered and running 10 kilometers. So this could be a dramatic game-changing device for helping people uh, look after their bodies better and hopefully lead at the least to dramatic improvements of quality of life and at best perhaps to actually recovering or making that a lot more likely in conjunction with a range of other treatments. But this device could have another huge impact on the ME-CFS landscape. The huge problem at the moment is that of course so many medical systems, in fact basically all of them, um, with some pockets of resistance, uh, you know, in, in different places, but basically all of them are not massively interested in the ME-CFS research um, and often adopt the biopsychosocial model whereby ME-CFS patients are neglected, the doctors are not taught about the biomedical research, um, people are left to their own devices, often they're told they just have a psychological problem, etc, etc. And this is a huge injustice at the moment. But if you had a device uh, which could actually show the biological basis or a biological basis of post-exertional malaise, well that immediately shows that this is a biomedical problem and that uh, ME-CFS patients are not making it up. And such a device could even be used as a diagnostic tool. You could potentially have not, not uh, uh, necessarily a continuous monitor but just a little finger prick device looking for the same protein of interest and just, you know, in a doctor's office someone comes in and they have a little finger prick test and it can say this person has ME or not. And that could be a real game-changing thing for ME-CFS as a whole because doctors who have hitherto been, um, you know, totally befuddled by these patients could actually have a simple way of diagnosing them and this would allow for there to be belief about the disease as well. And that then changes, you know, how much research funding is allocated. It changes the way um, government systems support ME-CFS patients. It changes the whole dynamic. So in this way, 
This device not only has a more comprehensive way of potentially helping ME-CFS patients than other such devices, but also could lead to widespread societal change. Now, I have actually been working with Peter Dean in relation to my work on thirst in ME-CFS and long COVID, and why I believe the thirst in ME-CFS has been historically misdiagnosed as psychogenic water drinking. Uh, Peter has a background particularly in water metabolism and homeostasis, and we have been collaborating together on hypotheses papers in relation to thirst. They've not been published yet, but hopefully this year we'll be in a position to submit these papers to journals. But when I learned about Peter's work in relation to ME-CFS more broadly and this device, I was really taken with his ideas and I've also been collaborating with him on this in terms of giving advice from a patient perspective. I'm delighted to have joined Peter's company as a PR officer. I really believe that this is a device that could dramatically change the quality of life of ME-CFS patients in future and I really hope that it can be brought to the market sooner rather than later. So that's it for this video. Please do leave your thoughts down below about how this kind of device could potentially help you improve your quality of life or better. And if you want, leave your questions for Peter about this device down below as well, because I hope to have an interview with him on this channel before too long, and I could pose to him the questions that you have about this device. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.